And homeopathy was actually even before synthetic drugs. You know? Right, homeopaths were, I mean, most medical doctors in the United States in the early, late 1800s, early 1900s were homeopaths also. Mm -hmm. But the 17 homeopathic schools were closed um, for various political reasons mm. in the early 1900s. So homeopathy was squelched, but now Many people practice homeopathy, and we have one of the best schools of homeopathy in the United States. Yes. The Northwestern School of Homeopathy. Mm -hmm. So they put out some really great homeopaths. They do, and I actually had the honor of meeting one that had graduated, and oh. she was also a medical doctor. Oh, great. So she mm -hmm. told me that actually that schooling was harder than going through medical school. I can believe that. Yeah. It's, so, it's so concentrated on the patterns of wellness that they find. So, mm -hmm. wonderful. And, and, and it is a really, the best of both worlds is what I would like to see so that all options are open because really my passion is that if I don't feel well or if I am wanting to enhance my wellness or get myself better from some situation, I want at my fingertips whatever I want. Mm -hmm. And to realize that there's a hundred options but the laws have made outlawing 98 of them Mm -hmm. then I really don't have a choice because I only have two options. Right. So I'm, I'm, my work is to get all of those options opened up so that they're now once again available to consumers and right. they can go on their healing journey. Yes, and Knowledge for Wellness's journey is also, our mission is to work collaboratively right. instead of just my way is the right way and the only way. Right. And to actually be able to have a choice if that is not working with you mm -hmm. to go and seek out other medicines. And people are really getting hungry for this. And mm -hmm. we have the other cultures coming over to the United States mm -hmm. introducing this mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. so. I, I agree with that. It's, it's like, uh, it's important for people to be able to know what's in, f who's in front of them mm -hmm. and what they have to offer and have everything above board and truthful instead of trying to get it by untruthful means. Mm -hmm. But it's also important to empower people to do their own journey. Right. So they don't just depend on one person making them better. Mm -hmm. So that they're exploring, they're trying some things. Right. And it's important for the government to have statutes where they can limit a practice if somebody's not practicing properly and, and causing harm to a person. So I do think it's the best of both worlds. and. My, my goal also is to empower people on that journey too. Mm -hmm. You're empowering through education, yes. which is wonderful, and you're teaching people what's really going on out there. Mm -hmm. And we're empowering by changing the laws or by teaching people that there are actually laws about this and that's why they don't have choices. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're standing in front of a doctor and he says or she says you have cancer and your options are surgery, chemo, and radiation, and they don't legally cannot tell you that there's another option for cancer right? because that would be outside of their standard of care. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is allow people to speak truthfully about what the options are and then people can make their own choice. Right. And with the internet, mm -hmm. they're... They know anyway. I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they're finding it all out on the internet. Exactly. But they don't... A lot of Americans do not realize that the reason their doctors or their people are not available for their healing is because the laws do not allow it. And our, our coalition really teaches people what the laws are. Okay. And they, and they help consumer groups get organized to say, okay, how can we change this law so that we can have what we want? Mm -hmm. Like in Minnesota, the recent uh, group of consumers that were buying raw milk and they mm -hmm. wondered why they couldn't have the farmer bring it into a drop site. And I said, well, the law doesn't allow you to and so so they are dra they drafted a law we all worked together and introduced a law to allow farmers to bring the milk to them okay so that's actually your role as the attorney for the National Health Freedom Coalition mm -hmm. is to help or assist in in the farmers or to actually help with the laws with the laws yes I usually so. help I, in the coalition, we educate people about the laws. Okay. And in our action lobbying organization, the action, uh, we lobby, draft laws, and help people pass new laws. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, in regards to that, I know a lot of people have become more aware because of the 13-year-old Danny Hauser mm -hmm. and what happened with his family. And that really 
brought it to the media and a lot of the people's attention, mm -hmm. thinking, what do you mean? I don't have the right to go and seek complementary or alternative medicine. Mm -hmm. They mandated this. So what was your role in that? Well, I went to the trials mm -hmm. and I was on the radio a lot over that case because we were teaching people what was going on actually with the case legally. Mm -hmm. And um, when you have a child, it's a different situation than an adult. And the parents are responsible for getting medical care for their children. Mm -hmm. And so child protection services are always uh, vigilant of parents that don't bring their children to proper medical care. Okay. And so there was a struggle there between parental rights to make a choice about a cancer treatment and uh, the state's rights to protect a child from harm or not surviving under their parents uh, uh, care. Mm -hmm. And I think that I, I said, you know, child protection is for people, for parents that aren't taking care of their children. Right, neglectful. Neglect, child neglect, the child is not going to survive. But these parents were not neglectful. They were going to uh, doctors all over, researching the web. They were, they were doing all of this research and talking to all kinds of experts to see what would be the best thing for their child. And mm -hmm. they decided on something, but it wasn't what the state would think was conventional care. Right. Now the experts that come to the trial the doctors, if a judge asked a doctor, what would you advise for this cancer in Minnesota, mm -hmm. they have to advise conventional care or they lose their license. Yes. So we, we don't have a law in Minnesota that allows cancer alternative treatments okay. like they do in some states. So uh, it, it was sad because the parental rights were trumped by the conventional model of standard of care. Mm -hmm. And this these parents were not allowed even to go to a Swiss hospital that was going to do microdosing. Okay. I mean, you know, all over the world there's options that they were looking at, mm -hmm. but they weren't allowed to go and access those options because the conventional standard of care was that this is what's best for your child and if you don't do it, they might die. Mm -hmm. But they also had an aunt that had gone through this process as well and it wasn't helpful. Right. With and so they looked at the history of the family, and that's when they chose to right. seek help elsewhere. I mean, they yes. had a lot, a lot of people. I mean, people have their reasons for going to alternatives. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't ever decide, you know, how, what their reasons are. Right. But they were, in the general overall assessment, in my opinion, as I watched the trials, these were not neglectful type of parents. Mm -hmm. They were looking at everything. Yes. They were open parents. Mm -hmm. They weren't people who were hiding their child in a closet and saying, we're not going to take care of you. Right. They were so interested in having their mm -hmm. child have the best care. Right. And you know, that's a hard philosophical or moral dilemma mm -hmm. because on one hand, conventional science says this, mm -hmm. and on the other hand, the parents, it's their child. Yes. And chemotherapy has been known to kill children. Mm -hmm. And in the first round of his chemo, he got extremely ill. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and there's long-term side effects to chemotherapy. There's heart problems and, you know, thyroid problems. I mean, there's all kinds of long-term things they were looking at, right? too. So it was a, a decision that shouldn't have been treated so um, hostily mm -hmm. because they were good-intentioned people. Right. Yes, they wanted the best for their child, mm -hmm. and that's when they educated themselves and looked throughout the world where this would benefit their mm -hmm. child. And I think in the end, uh, the doctors did uh, uh, do less drugs than they otherwise would have, mm -hmm. and you know, and they did some alternatives to com complement. But I think that the hype around it was there was the polarity in the country. Why are those people trying to kill their kid? Because you know, they're not doing conventional care. Mm -hmm. And then there was the other people saying, don't let them do chemo, it'll kill them. You know, and, the, and so there was this polarity going on and you could see the polarity in the country. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what's happening. And it's happening on a lot of levels in this country. And I think the freedom to choose and balancing the interest of the parents and the government to keep kids safe was a sensitive issue. And I think it shouldn't have been treated so harshly. Right. There should have been more mediation, more 
conversation. It shouldn't have been like, if you don't do this right now, we're taking your children away. Mm -hmm. And look at what they were looking at. And they were playing. scared. Mm -hmm. And to see what educated guess, education that they were looking at to benefit their child mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And, the, and, and the education they had about the whole world of those options was not the education that their doctors had. Mm -hmm. the doctors are only trained in their one area. Right. So their doctors didn't know anything about all these alternatives, and that's the sad part. Yes. So I think as we open up the options legally, doctors will be able to learn more things about wellness, mm -hmm. and, they, and the Holistic Medical Association of Minnesota is great.